In this video, we'll be taking up the reciprocal of a linear function homework sheet. Uh, this is actually the first of two homework sheets. So the first one is basically just uh, trying to determine the end behavior and the behavior near the, um, the vertical asymptote and summarize in the table. So we can do the calculation, uh, approach four from the left, approach four from the right, um, and then let x be larger and larger positive numbers or larger and larger negative values. Uh, for number two, they want us to take a look at the graph and then create, uh, determine the um, asymptotes. So uh, you can see that the vertical asymptote is x equals negative one and the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. And they also actually want us to build an equation. So using the vertical asymptote, uh, I can generate the factor of x plus one in the denominator. Um, it's basically what you did with polynomials. With the zero, you can generate the factor. And then I have to solve for the numerator, and I just sub in a point on the, on the function. For three, they wanted me to find the equation of asymptotes and find the y-intercept. So that was just some uh, pretty basic algebra. I found the zero. And remember, for horizontal asymptotes, the, um, the reciprocal linear function always have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. Now, y intercept is easy, just find f of zero. Okay, for question four, they give us the graphs and they ask us to find the equation. So I first found the asymptotes, and if I have the vertical asymptote, I can generate the factor in the denominator, and I can solve for the numerator by subbing in a point. So that's basically the same strategy um, for the 4a and 4b. I actually did not need the horizontal asymptote. Uh, for four, but I wrote it in anyways. I think it's just a, a habit, out of habit. Okay, so for question five, they ask us to uh, sketch the function. Uh, so the way I sketched the function was using my shortcut. I used my asymptotes and my y-intercept, and I was able to piece everything together. So by using the shortcut, you don't need to find end behavior and the behavior near the vertical asymptote. It, it has to be, there's only one possible function, uh, one possible graph that will, that, will, that will fit the criteria of the asymptotes and the y-intercept. Um, yep, so that's how I did 5a and 5b. Uh, and just a quick reminder, it only works because um, I know that there are no x-intercepts. For question six, uh, they gave me the function, asked me to graph it, find the domain, range, equation of asymptotes, and label the y-intercept. So, yep, I did all that. So how I graphed it was the same as how I graphed five. Asymptotes and y-intercept, and knowing that there's no x-intercept, there's only really one graph that, that can fit the, fit the criteria. Okay. Uh, for question seven, is a basic word problem. It says that uh, pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. So uh, that basically says that as pressure increases, volume decreases, and as volume increases, pressure decreases. So it's K over V, solve for K. Um, and then ask us to graph it. And if they give me the volume, I can solve for the pressure. That's what I did for part C. And part D is as you increase the pressure, uh, sorry, as you increase the volume, you'll notice that the pressure is uh, approaching zero. All right, uh, eight is just um, a refresher on, on transformations. Uh, I wouldn't put too much emphasis on, on question eight, but uh, B is telling you what the vertical stretch factor is, and you can tell how um, that each, as you uh, work with each function here, uh, one over x plus two, three over x plus two, and five over x plus two, um, is just ver like b, like three over x plus two is taking one over x plus two and vertically stretching it by a factor of three. And five over x plus two is one over x plus two with a vertical stretch by a factor of five. So they should look uh, vertically stretched. Uh, the second and third graph compared to the first graph. Uh, but like I said, uh, question eight is not really the emphasis of, of the first lesson. Uh, I would argue questions one through six is, is really 
uh, focusing on the big ideas that we're trying to get across uh, when we talk about reciprocal linear functions.